Hello, everyone, and thank you all so much for being here today. We would like to start by thanking the Navy Child and Youth Programs for making today's webinar on academic portfolios possible. We are going to pull up a poll for you all to take. Um, it asks uh, your role regarding today's webinar. We'd love for you to take that. Um, perhaps you're a parent or a counselor. We often have educators with us, other school liaisons. Awesome. Okay, great. It looks like we've got some parents, some educators, and other. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome to like click the little X box to um, move that poll, but that is great. I'm so happy that we've got a mix of people today. Um, often we do have professionals joining us, and we appreciate you being here. We always welcome professionals who work with military-connected children to our parent trainings, and I know you will find the information and tips we present useful. Please note that our MSEC parent support webinars have been designed with parents as the target audience. Before we introduce ourselves, we wanted to share with you a bit more about MSEC and its mission. The Military Child Education Coalition, or MSEC, is a nonprofit organization established 25 years ago. Our mission is to support all military connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve education challenges associated with the military lifestyle. In 2005, MSEC formalized support and programming for military-connected parents so they may be empowered, informed, and proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. We strive to deliver informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and emotional issues associated with the military family lifestyle. Our vision is for every military-connected child to be college, work, and life ready. My name is Emily Barton. I live in Montgomery, Alabama. I started with MSEC in 2018 as a parent educator, and I'm also a member of the webinar team and an educator. My husband is active duty Air Force, and we're stationed here at Maxwell Air Force Base. We have two military connected children. Our daughter is 20 years old. She is a sophomore in college in Texas, and our son just turned 18, and uh, he is a senior in high school and getting ready to graduate in May. So we are very excited about that. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are moving in June. We're PCSing to Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Nikki for her to introduce herself. Thank you so much, Emily. Again, my name is Nikki Harrison, and I am joining you from El Paso, Texas. <clears throat> I always forget to kind of say where I live. I don't know why. Um, but I was an active duty military spouse for 21 years, and now I'm a veteran spouse to a retired Marine, and we have two boys. I also, like Emily, have a son who is a senior who just turned 18 in April as well. So um, really excited for graduation, a little bittersweet because he will not be attending college in Texas. He's going far away. So I'm a little sad about that. And we have an eighth grader. So I was just laughing with Emily saying, I guess there's an eighth grade graduation slash celebration that happens. So um, I'm in the midst of that as well and have been with MSEC since 2018 and really just have a background in post-secondary education. So thank you all again for being here. We appreciate it so much. So a few administrative announcements. Um, at the end of the webinar, we would like to invite you to take our survey about today's presentation. We really appreciate the feedback. So do our funders. It just takes a few minutes, two to three minutes to complete. And it just lets us know how we're doing and hopefully helps us bring the best training opportunities possible for you, our military connected parents. 
I think most of you found the chat box on your screen. We'd love for you to engage. We um, really like that in our webinar. So please feel free to put comments and questions in there. Um, it's that little dialogue bubble at the bottom of your screen if you haven't found it yet. And also we have a downloadable resource. I will share it again, but we have put that in the chat box that accompanies our webinar today and it has all of the resources and, and the websites and things that we'll be sharing with you will be in that downloadable resource. We are recording this webinar, so um, please know that you'll be able to review the recording at a later time and if you have any technical difficulties. Also, if you're joining by phone, you will probably not be able to access that downloadable resource, but if you send us a private message and share your email, we can make sure that we get that to you so you have access to that. So let's talk a little bit about our learning objectives today. So with this webinar on academic portfolios, we are going to summarize the importance of having a portfolio, especially for our military connected students. We're going to identify the components of the portfolio and kind of go through those and also describe how to create the actual portfolio. And I think Emily um, may show you kind of her a little bit of version of one that she has. And I have kind of a version myself as well. So really um, want you to be able to kind of understand how the portfolio works. So we have another poll question for you that we would love for you to take. We'd like to know what grades are your children in? Do you have elementary school kiddos, middle school, high school? Um, please share, we'd love to know. Okay, it looks like, oh my gosh, we have a really good mix. So um, looks like a, a lot of elementary school, some middle and some high school. So a really good mix of um, different grades that your children are in. And so we'll try to kind of address all of those grades when building the portfolio. So I'm gonna turn it over to Emily. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for um, sharing that. And it is good to know. And the, the great thing is with an academic portfolio, it's a really good idea to start when your children are in elementary school and just build upon that. So we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about that today. Uh, so as I know a lot of you all know, most military families do move every two to three years. The average military child will change schools between six and nine times uh, between the years of kindergarten and 12th grade. These moves sometimes occur during summer break. However, some may occur during the actual school year. The mobile military family lifestyle poses additional challenges when, when students have exceptional needs or during those high school years or uh, even when changing from a public to a private school or to homeschooling. The Military Kids Now 2020 Education Survey was conducted over four months and contained an array of 80 different closed and open-ended items. More than 5,100 responses were collected from military-connected students, parents, veterans, and professionals serving military-connected children. Nikki has put a link to this summary report in your chat box feel free to download it and take a look at it. Uh, specifically, uh, pages seven, eight, and nine are, are pretty informative and helpful. Page nine addresses the transitions uh, from a military child's perspective. So here are a few statements from these military kids. One said, Every school is different, different requirements, different schedules and resources. Another said, moving is not a choice. And another said, everything is new, not just one thing. So as we read statements like these, we can see how transitioning from place to place is challenging for our military connected kids. Often it is the parents who provide the only stability for them during these transitions. As parents, we can be proactive in our children's lives when it comes to their education. And one way to do this is to build and maintain an academic portfolio 
which accurately reflects who our child is and their progress throughout school. Not to mention, it helps keep your family organized when it comes to school paperwork. So we have a funny little video here for you to see. I know a lot of us feel this way at the end of the school year with all of the stacks and stacks of papers. In order to avoid this type of situation, it can be very helpful to implement a systematic process of organizing paperwork in a safe place. That way we can always find specific documents when we need them. And it is also okay to let go of some of the papers as this video demonstrates. So uh, we have another poll that we would like for you to take. And it asks, do you already have a showcase portfolio for your child or teen? So we'd like for you to take that. Uh, all right, good. Okay, yes. Wonderful. Okay, so um, a yes. Several, I'm not sure, and uh, one, what is a showcase portfolio? And I'm glad you asked. We are now going to explain what that means. And you're welcome to click the little X button to remove that poll. So I'm gonna pass it over to Nikki to talk about the showcase portfolio. Okay, so I love how somebody said, what is a showcase portfolio? Especially because we were talking about academic portfolios. So. Um, a portfolio for military connected children is simply an organized collection of personal information, grades, samples of work from the classroom. You can even include some letters of recommendation, awards, um, testing documents. I know a lot of us have those state standardized testing results that we have and other documents that reflect your child's activities and progress in school and even the community or workforce. We've already mentioned that being proactive and your child's best advocate when they're highly mobile is really important. And so if you can bring a portfolio to that first meeting at your child's school as they're trying to register and get them settled in their new location, it can really assist the school professionals in a multitude of ways. You as a parent are showcasing important information about your child that will hopefully help the school staff know how to better help your student during that transition and adjust to the new school. If you've already have some schoolwork at home, we recommend that you take some time to sit with your child and talk about their work. Together, you can set goals for that next grading period. And it's a great way to remind yourself about improvements you'd like to use as a potential goal. Um, I love a good sticky note. I will tell you, I have so many post-it notepads of, of different colors. This is like a, a bright pink. This is a great way to kind of keep track of things. Um, and you can make those clear goals. And it gives you a visual if you're a visual person as well. Um, when your child brings home their weekly folder, you can kind of look at everything um, together and review those goals and kind of see what fits and what papers best align with those goals. And you can use those and kind of put those in that showcase portfolio. And then anything else that you have can really be discarded and thrown away, which I know as parents, it's, it's really hard. Um, to do. You can do this with your elementary school age kids, you can do it with your middle schoolers, and you can also do it with your older students um, and just have them maybe take a more active role in the reviewing of the paperwork. And I really like that process because it kind of helps discuss grades and accomplishments um, and kind of keeps everything on track. The nice thing about it is you can repeat this process each grading period. Um, so if you're in quarters, you can do it every quarter um, while they're in school. And then at the end of the year, you and your child can choose four to six papers to add to their academic transition portfolio as a showcase of their capabilities. So you can kind of have a, a nice bigger portfolio and then maybe one kind of little, a smaller one that you keep track of that's really their, the best of their work. Um, and that's nice to kind of have that. 
So the benefits of having an academic transition portfolio for our military connected students, it's essential to keep the students records current, accurate and complete. An academic portfolio shows that progress over time by keeping samples of their schoolwork. And you can kind of use that showcase portfolio as steps um, as an optimal way to select the schoolwork that best represents their skills. You want to build and maintain that academic portfolio, which gives school personnel an organized snapshot of your students' strengths and progress over challenges. Um, this important information about your child really will help school staff, um, teachers, and, and everyone that takes part in that process of the student's transition and adjustment to the new school. The portfolio really does help being your child's best advocate because you can showcase details about them. Um, and I really like that about having that portfolio. Sometimes there can be delays in processing official school records. I think we've all been there where like that student file doesn't get right where it needs to be in a timely manner. So having the portfolio is a great way to expedite the process, especially if you have a student that has exceptional needs. Um, not having those records can on hand can kind of hinder a military uh, connected child from being immediately placed in appropriate courses. Um, while that transfer of records has improved thanks to the MIC-3 or the Military Interstate Children's Compact Commission, um, which requires records to be transferred in a timely manner, having an unofficial copy in hand really can be helpful in enrollment and placement. Uh, step into that new school office armed with all the information, optimally to place your student immediately instead of having to wait for records to arrive. It's a great um, tool. I know I always try, especially once my um, child had an unofficial transcript or had a transcript, always to kind of have an unofficial one that we could give to that new school. And so I think that's really helpful. Um, the new school and teachers um, will help kind of place their, the student in the classes and activities they enjoy. And that student information really needs to be easily understood, maintained, transported, and transmitted. Um, and it'll ease a lot of that stress that comes with, um, you know, the, the transition of our school age children. And it does help teach organization, you know, having everything together in one place so you're not hunting for paperwork. Um, it makes it, you know, where it's easily portable for move, for each move and really can model and teach your student that same process because at some point um, we want them to be able to carry that on. And so these are some of the benefits of having the portfolio. Emily? Yes. Okay. So we are now going to talk more about getting started with this academic portfolio. You may choose to start with a notebook that you keep building upon from year to year. So in order to do this, you'll need a three inch three ring binder. And so I have one here that I'm going to sort of show you today. It's just a simple um, three ring binder. A cover sheet is very helpful to identify the binder. Uh, it would be great for your student to create their own. Um, they can include their name as well as their graduation year. Uh, and so for those of you who do have elementary age students, I know that it's sort of hard sometimes to think about them graduating, but I can assure you that the time does go back quickly and it's better to go ahead and create this when they are in grade school. And that way you can have all this information because once middle and high school years uh, come by they they go back quickly and you want to have all of this organized in one place in one place so the cover sheet goes under the clear plastic sleeve that's in the front of the binder so that it's easy to identify you're also going to want a set of uh, six tab dividers as well as these page protectors. These can be very helpful. Um, I also like the dividers that have folders in them and that way you can stick uh, important papers in there as well. 
So decide together with your student what to include on the tabs of the dividers uh, or if they have um, or on the, the clear protective covers uh, and your child can also do those themselves. Uh, you can they can add personal notes or any type of identifying information on each tab. The next step is to gather all of those important documents. Gathering these documents, materials, and assembling the binder will take some time and effort, but it will pay off. You will definitely want to involve your child in this process and discuss with them what needs to be kept and added to the portfolio. We want them to know that it is their academic portfolio and they should own, or own it. We do recommend that you store your child's academic portfolio in a well-located site and hand carry it with you during each move. We're now going to dive deeper into each section or tab of the binder. Uh, know that these suggestions that we make are applicable to most students, but feel free to add or delete tabs that don't work for you. So we'll start with tab number one. Under this first tab, you'll want to file all personal information related to your child. So this is where you can store their address, social security number, and any type of family affiliation or military service information. Uh, you'll also want to file a copy of your child's birth certificate within this tab. So having copies of your child's birth certificate as well as social security card can be very helpful. You'll want to keep those originals in a safe place, perhaps a safe deposit box or some type of um, fireproof safe. However, um, these copies are really important to have within this binder because a new school uh, may need this information right away. Often schools want to see the original documents, the original social security card or original birth certificate for registration, um, but requirements may vary from district to district. So it's best to bring the originals with you at the time of registration, just in case. Also within this first tab, you'll want to keep a copy of um, military orders as well as proof of residency. This might be um, a mortgage statement or a bill, something that shows you're, you're a resident. You'll also want to include any legal documents here as well as uh, health records. Uh, and immunization records. Uh, I mentioned earlier, just yesterday, we were uh, dealing with my son's immunization records for college. So uh, this is something you'll want to have. Um, and oftentimes it's not just the immunization record, but perhaps it's a signed document that a uh, doctor or nurse needs to sign. So this is a great place to keep all of that type of paperwork. So moving on to tab number two, uh, this is where you will put your child's current school information. Here you can add the current school's address, website, phone number, email, and at least uh, information from uh, at least one point of contact, such as the registrar or secretary or counselor. It's very helpful also to include the school's grading policies as well as the grading scale. Uh, we all know these can vary from school to school, and so it's important to put the current school's information here. You may also want to put the school's profile you can typically find the school profile in the parent handbook or by asking the school guidance counselor. If you know that you're going to have an upcoming move, it's a very good idea to include the current teacher's name and, if possible, an email address or another way to get in touch uh, with that teacher in the event that you need to get in touch with them after you have moved. So you'll want to file that information here. 
You may also want to record the names and email addresses of other school staff who have contact with your child, such as a school counselor or any special education uh, service personnel, such as a speech teacher or occupational therapist, perhaps special ed teachers or the gifted coordinator. Put their information here as well. You'll also want to gather contact information from any extra extracurricular point of contact, such as coaches or music teachers or theater directors. These can come in handy. Also, consider making copies of any textbook covers that your child uses or the table of contents. You may even want to put the textbook ISBN number here. This way you are tracking specific coursework that your child is covering. This can be especially helpful when it comes to courses that may have different names, uh, such as in, in math or in history. If your child is using online textbooks, you might wanna download a copy of perhaps the cover of that textbook or information. You can also write down titles, different curricula that's being used, or print out those table of contents. If your child is in middle or high school, the teachers often give students a class syllabus. You'll want to make a copy of the syllabus information in case you need to verify course content later on with another school. This con excuse me, this syllabus usually uh, shows exactly what your student is learning in each class that they took. And this really helps when uh, placing a child in another course, especially if you know you're going to have a mid-year move, this information can be very helpful. All right, and so now we're going to talk about tab three, which is where we store all records. Okay, I put just real quickly a, a tip in the chat box too about, um, as Emily was talking about the teachers and things like that, keeping in touch with previous staff or teachers from schools through social media is helpful as well. I know my high schoolers had to reach back out for a letter of recommendation before from a previous teacher. Um, so, you know, with moving around, um, we don't always get to be in the same place um, most of the time. So for those records, um, earlier we talked about the fact that most of our military children will likely change schools before graduation due to transitioning every two to three years. And so if you know you'll PCS, notify your current school and try to give them as much notice as possible, but at least a two week window to allow them to gather doc documents. Because sometimes if you're requesting things from their, their file or transcripts, they need time to be able to process that. Um, you can ask the school for a copy of your student's cumulative folder or file as soon as you know you're PCSing. Schools are not required by law to supply you with a copy. So I will tell you, I have been denied a copy before. However, in uh, many of the workshops we have offered in military communities, we haven't heard of a lot of that happening. So I think it just depends on the district and the state and things like that. Know that schools may charge you though for those copies um, if they have to make them. Under the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or you'll hear it uh, referred to as FERPA, you as a parent have the right to inspect and review your child's records. Schools have 45 days to comply after a parent's request to inspect and review their child's education file. Some states require less time, but federal law states it cannot take longer than 45 days. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. And we've put the link to that um, policy in your chat box so that you have that. So in those records, include your students' current schedule. So it shows the new school what they're currently enrolled in, any previous report cards if you're moving mid-year or withdrawal grades, those test scores, especially those standardized test results are really important. Um, sometimes you can ask um, access those electronically. Actually, a lot of the times you can, but if you have a paper copy, that helps as well. 
any of those grade level reading and math scores, so those benchmarks or interim testing, um, and maybe what they are. I feel like every district has something different. You know, some are using Lexile levels, some are using um, like AR, like the Accelerated Reader is a kind of a different program. Uh, so have those as well. And then any other official testing results that you may have kept. If you're moving mid-year, include what they have completed in their current grade. So you can also uh, include those unofficial school transcripts, which is helpful to show all the grades and the class rank. And finally, under this tab, include any attendance records. Um, some schools require to see, uh, have a requirement to see attendance records to make sure your student was you know, actually attending school. So in tab four, we have those special programs. And so if applicable, include any current special programs that your child is enrolled in or any um, specialized services that they're receiving. So this includes those IEPs, those individual accommodation plans or 504s, um, maybe a gifted program description, ESL, English as a Second Language, or ELL, English Language Learners, or Bilingual Education. You can include those as well. Uh, schedule an annual review of any existing IEP or 504 plans prior to PCSing so that you can have the most up-to-date records for that receiving school. If you've done some private testing or have identification information, include that in this tab as well as some districts will allow um, it to be used for data for placement. Often the files for special programs be can become quite large. So for this tab, you may prefer a binder just devoted for special education. Um, I, a lot of times I have a binder just for special education. So often the files for those programs can be quite large. And so a tab may, I mean, that tab may take up your whole um, binder. Um, so keep that in mind. Tab five is that profile. This is where you file the documents relating to activities that your student participates in, um, the, more of those kind of specialized activities. So sports, honor society, um, scouts, or um, whether it's boy or girl scouts, and place those showcase papers that we discussed earlier. This is also a great place to put volunteer hours. I know I have a high schooler that is in National Honor Society and they're required to log volunteer hours. And while they keep that log themselves as you know, the, they do at school, um, it's good for your student to have that as well. Um, and they can use that for future employment, for college applications. Uh, sometimes they'll look at that. Um, scholarship opportunities, sometimes they require um, several hours just to be able to apply for a scholarship. And of course, some high schools actually require it to graduate outside of National Honor Society. So great place to put these things as well. And then those performance assessments or work samples, um, those great essays, um, graded worksheets, reports, um, science fair projects, uh, maybe even like art. I love, you know, kids that are very artistic. Um, and a great idea for those larger projects is just to kind of take a photo and have the grading rubric attached to them. And you can kind of put that in there. Um, if you have oversized certificates, you can file them at the very end of the uh, binder. I love that Emily mentioned um, the sheet protectors. Sheet protectors are great for putting certificates in and you can just put them all in there and um, I, I like to like binder clip the top so they don't come out, <laughs> so they don't fall out. So you can do that as well. Just a reminder, there's no need to keep every paper, just the ones that showcase your students' best work. And for our younger children, you could maybe have a profile tab that includes items for STEM clubs or, or even paintings that they've done in art classes, um, poetry. Um, I love that as well. You can put those in there. Those, those great book reports they do, um, that they did a fantastic job. You can put those in. So we have a question for you um, that we've put um, in the chat box. For those with older children, has your student asked for a letter of recommendation? Has anyone had a, their student ask for a letter of recommendation? I feel like for maybe some of our high schoolers, 
they've you know probably had to ask for those. Um, letters of recommendation are really important for your student. And so especially if you are in a mid-year move, um, it can help by creating a similar school environment or a mirror of the extracurricular opportunities once you move. So having those, it's really important. Um, portfolio letters can come from specific experiences as well. So those congratulatory letters um, for achieving award, um, you can include those as well. And really letters of recommendation can be written by anyone who can offer an objective overall endorsement of your students' skills and abilities. So keep that in mind when your, your student may be looking for someone to write that recommendation letter for them. And then lastly, we have on here resumes. And I think this, um, I always feel like resumes don't get talked about enough for our, our students. We think about it as sometimes as an adult thing, right? That we need a resume, but it's really great for your student to start a resume as soon as possible to highlight and summarize all of their accomplishments. It can help with summer jobs. Um, it can help with college applications even post-secondary um, education um, after that, um, internships, scholarships, all sorts of things. So have them start that. I try to kind of say by their freshman year of high school is a great time to have them start to start a resume and then kind of add to it as they take on additional you know, responsibilities or join you know, certain activities and clubs and things like that. And we've put a link in the chat box as well to Military One Source um, because they offer some free resume building services on your installation. So through like an ACS or um, the AFRC or um, the Marine Corps Community Services. So you can look for those as well. And Emily's going to talk about new schools. Right. And um, I agree with the uh, starting the resume during freshman year or, you know, as early as possible because you don't want them to get to their senior year and then have to think back over all of the activities that they were involved in. It's really good to, to start it early. Good. Okay. So the sixth tab of your child's academic portfolio will contain all of the information pertaining to the new school or the next school that your child will be attending. So here you can put the school's address, phone number, the school calendar, grading policies. Perhaps you don't know what specific school your child will be attending. Perhaps there are a couple of different ones you're considering, or perhaps you just know the district that your child will be moving to. And so you can include all of that information here as well. You uh, will put the uh, contact information of anybody that you've talked with at this new school, put that here. Also, be sure to include registration requirements because they can vary by location. You can find this information online on the school or district website. Also, if you have sent uh, a new school any documents, this is a good place to note what you sent and when it was sent. Once you have actually moved to this new school or new location, we do suggest moving these documents from this tab to the, the current school tab, that tab number two. All right, uh, so now that we've covered all of those tabs, we're going to talk for a few minutes about a digital portfolio because this is another great option. The electronic format of a digital portfolio is very easy to maintain and change and update. Uh, items within a digital portfolio can be scanned or otherwise converted into a digital portfolio, or excuse me, digital format, which is very helpful. A digital format also allows you to upload video footage. This can be particularly helpful for military connected students who are interested in sports or drama or music. You can easily upload footage of games or performances to a digital portfolio. 
it can also be very beneficial to have this video footage to submit to coaches or drama teachers or music teachers if your student has to miss the sports tryouts or the music or theater auditions. Perhaps you don't actually move until the middle to end of summer when auditions or tryouts have already occurred. And so it's helpful to have some samples of videos so that you can submit them to coaches or teachers. Uh, this may provide opportunities for your child that they might not ordinarily have. And it's also just a great way to um, keep these uh, videos for your child to showcase their talents at any for any future opportunities. So we do have a question that we'd like for you to answer in the chat box. Are any of you using a digital portfolio right now? Perhaps you've already started or perhaps you're considering it. It really can be a wonderful thing to do. Um, I like having the actual binder, but there are so many benefits to having it digitally. So for those of you who are currently using or considering using a digital portfolio, we do have some helpful hints. Uh, it's helpful to create one specific digital portfolio for all of your documents. You can keep this on your desktop of your computer uh, and entitle it uh, a documents folder or digital portfolio. You'll want to nest other folders within this main documents folder. This essentially creates a file drawer or portfolio on your desktop. Be sure to file and save as you go and give the files logical specific names. Include dates in the file names as much as possible. This uh, helps you keep track of the most current information. You'll want to update this regularly, perhaps once a quarter, and keep these files uncluttered by clearing out old files of information regularly. Be sure to back up this information often using an external hard drive like a thumb drive or cloud storage. Uh, this can be very important. So I have another question for you all. Are you familiar with SchoolQuest? Have you heard about SchoolQuest? I know um, some of you probably are, and we're going to share some more information about it now. SchoolQuest is a wonderful free online interactive tool which was created by MSEC, and it helps military connected families prepare for school moves and more. SchoolQuest contains a plethora of information and tools and resources, uh, things that you can download as well as webinars and previously recorded podcasts that address the unique challenges of military connected students. It also offers access to a digital portfolio, which is a wonderful aspect. Um, and so it'd be an easy way for you to create this digital portfolio if you are interested. So we put a link to SchoolQuest in your chat box. And uh, we do invite you to take a look at it. It is free um, and we're gonna share some wonderful uh, options that it offers in a few minutes. But first, we're going to start by watching a video that gives you a little bit of an overview of SchoolQuest. More transition resources, great specific roadmaps to success, state-specific scholarship information, FAFSA, GI Bill, and the college application processes. The Student Quest Academic Tracker provides six year academic planning, resources for understanding the military interstate compact, and establishing a high school graduation plan. While School Quest was designed and created with military connected students in mind, this resource tool is available to all students, including non military students. The Military Child Education Coalition School Quest can solve your most frustrating problems related to changing schools. It'll help you plan your moves, stay on top of the details, organize your records, 
and research new schools. Additionally, you can find personalized transition assistance through our military student consultants. For more information, we invite you to visit schoolquest.militarychild.org. Or transition resources. Okay, that I feel like gives a good little snapshot of the video of um, kind of what School Quest does. Um, and it really is an excellent resource. And on the screen, as you can see, we have a sample of a student profile and each individual um, and is only viewable to the user. So I will say I have a um, School Quest um, file or um, account, I should say. And for each one of our children, I have their own like individualized profile. And so it's nice that you can kind of customize that for each one of your children, kind of include all of their information, um, as well as some, some checklists and you can upload documents and things like that. So um, it's really great to, to do that for each one of your kids. And I think that's really helpful um, in having that profile. Next, um, the nice thing that School Quest does is it has checklists, and these are actually customizable. That's one thing that I really like about the checklist is you can um, add and take away different pieces of information that you need. And this is a sample checklist that you can see here on the screen, and it does help you track documents when needed. Um, when you have a transitioning uh, student, so when you you're getting ready to PCS move. Um, I know all of us have the, the longest probably to-do lists ever. Um, it's nice to have a checklist for your students so you can kind of go through and make sure you have all of those different things. One of the things I, I said a little bit earlier in the chat box about the digital portfolio format is it's nice because most school districts now have online registration. Uh, as a matter of fact, where I live, online registration opened yesterday, uh, the 1st of April. Um, I don't know if that was a good idea or not, April Fool's Day, but... <laughs> But it opened on that day, and it's nice with the electronic format to be able to just upload everything that you need into those online registration systems. So I think that's a really nice um, to have when you have um, an electronic portfolio, and SchoolQuest is a great way to kind of keep all of that together. So just kind of in final thoughts as we're wrapping up, um, we hope that you found the information in today's webinar informative um, and hopefully that you, you have some takeaways. Uh, keeping those detailed records can really be a big benefit to students, especially moving to another school. Maintaining that portfolio and updating it regularly is really important. So as your students' goals and experience change, so should the documents that reflect them in that portfolio. And so you can always expand it. You can add more tabs if you needed. I know I use kind of accordion file folders for a lot of things um, for our kids. And so it's, it's really great. And it's never too early to begin. I love that Emily said you can start right when they're in elementary school. Um, it's a great way to kind of showcase and start those uh, the, the portfolio that shows the growth of your student academically and personally. Remember to hand carry them. I think for those of us that have PCS enough times, we know to hand carry those portfolios and important documents. And we hope that you and your student will find the portfolios very useful in their educational journey. So um, we hope you've really enjoyed this webinar here today. Great. Yes, we are so happy to have all of you and I hope you're able to take away some good tips and strategies for creating this portfolio because it is very useful um, as your children get older. Uh, you don't want to have to go searching back through all of the mounds of paperwork. So I hope this this helps you today. Uh, we would like to invite you to take our survey for today's webinar. You can do that by clicking on the survey link that is in your chat box. There's also the QR code on your slide. Um, it only takes a couple of minutes and we do appreciate your feedback. 
uh, when you click on the survey, you'll click webinar survey, and you'll type in the four digit webinar number, which is 4624. Be sure to hit submit at the end of the survey. Uh, and if you don't fill it out now, that is okay. We'll um, make sure to send an e email invitation to take it at a later time. We do use this tool to make ongoing improvements to our webinar series, as well as add new topics of interest and provide feedback to our funders. So we would appreciate you taking it. If you uh, have missed one of our previous webinars, or if you would like to share this session, the recordings can be found on our website, uh, militarychild.org, under Programs, Trainings, and Initiatives. Click on For Parents, and you'll see the webinars we have to offer. That link is in your chat box as well. If you have any questions, concerns, or education-related issues for your military-connected students, please feel free to reach out to our military student consultants or MSCs. They are the premier source to help you with all of your questions, and you can email them or give them a call at that number that's on your slide. The Military Child Wellbeing Toolkit was developed for parents, school professionals, behavioral mental health professionals, as well as community leaders. It is a really wonderful tool full of resources for all aspects of the Military Connected Child's Wellbeing. And we'd love for you to explore it on our website. You can uh, click on the link that's in your chat box and we also have that QR code on your slide. Our MSEC 360 summits provide opportunities for cross-sector collaboration as well as idea sharing and programming support. For more information about these summits, you can use the QR code on your screen or click the link in your chat. We are very excited to announce that registration is open for our Global Training Summit this summer in Washington, D.C. Uh, it will run from July 29th through the July 31st. GTS is the premier professional development opportunity for everyone who serves and supports the educational needs of military and veteran connected children. To register, click, uh, you are welcome to click the link in your chat box and we hope to see you in DC this summer. The MSEC Call for the Arts program is going on right now and invites military connected children from all over the world representing every branch of service to share interpretations through art of what it means to be a military connected child. For more information, uh, use the QR code or click the link in your chat box and submissions run through April 30th. So definitely encourage your children to submit their artwork. If you are interested in getting a certificate of completion, please complete that online survey. You're also welcome to email research at militarychild.org if you need a survey for a previously recorded uh, webinar. We have some wonderful webinars coming up tomorrow on Wednesday, April uh, 3rd, we'll be presenting math and science for young children. And then next Tuesday, April 9th, we'll be, be presenting procrastination and your military child. You can see the registration links for these webinars in your chat box. All of our webinars start at 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time. So we'd love to see you there. We'd also like to give a very special thanks to the Navy Child and Youth Programs for making today's webinar possible, and we want to thank you all for joining us today. I hope this was helpful for you all, and uh, Nikki and I are going to stay on for a couple of minutes in case you have any other questions. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care, everybody.